Yo, what's going on you guys? This is your boy RBG bringing you another video on a game that's been relatively silent in terms of updates. And that's Insomniac's newest acquired IP, Marvel's Wolverine. This has officially been a year since we got that bombshell of a reveal trailer last September. And ever since then, we've been dissecting every little detail we can to see what the game will entail. For the most part, we can deduce that at some point the story will take place in Madripoor, a crime-ridden island that's been widely associated with stories from the X-Men series. In the most recent modern media, we've seen it in Marvel Studios' Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and now it'll be a key location in Marvel's Wolverine. Now before we dive deeply into this topic, I want to ask you guys to give this video a like. I know it's a little daunting to get this question at the beginning of the video, but it really helps out on the algorithm side of things. And if you reached the end of this video and you didn't think it was satisfactory, feel free to take that like back. Just like the video because it really helps the boy out. Anyways, there have been a lot of clues that hint at what the game could be borrowing from in the comics, but so far fans have very little insight into how Marvel's Wolverine is going to even play. It could allow players to explore parts of Magiport in open sections like The Last of Us, which the trailer's tone seems to be alluding to, or it could be fully linear. Unlike our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, Wolverine doesn't necessarily have ways of traversing big cities with the thwip of a web, so the way in which missions are laid out could be vastly different from Insomniac's other Earth 1048 Marvel titles. Gameplay mechanics like regeneration and berserker rage in Marvel's Wolverine are also possible, but have not yet been confirmed. I know a lot of you guys are just hoping that this would be just as good, if not better, than the X-Men Origins Uncaged Edition. A title that's considered the best Wolverine game, which if I'm gonna be honest, isn't necessarily saying much, since most video games featuring the Bouncing Berserker were cashing in on the hype of the Fox X-Men films. Not to mention most of them were done by Activision, which was a company that was spitballing games out at a rapid rate. So there were a lot more misses than hits in the Activision sweatshop. But given how well Insomniac has been doing with their Marvel Spider-Man games, I think this will turn out to be yet another great project from them. Even though Marvel has been working with other developers and produced some solid games such as Square's Guardians of the Galaxy, they still haven't been able to garner the same level of hype when they announce another game with Sony and Insomniac. Ever since Marvel Spider-Man's success, Insomniac has managed to build a large congregation that doesn't want any other company to touch a Marvel title but them. Which is understandable, because the Spider-Man games have laid out an excellent foundation, and fans want to see how the team continues to expand that universe with the other Marvel heroes. If you remember during an interview, Marvel Spider-Man 1 and 2's creative director Brian Intihar even mentioned that they wanted the first game to be THE Iron Man of their video game universe, which was highly alluding to an expanded Marvel game universe. And as we see, we're getting that with Wolverine being their latest venture in their Earth 1048 continuity. Anyways, we're just waiting to see what this game will look like in engine as opposed to a cinematic trailer, and what we can expect with its story and gameplay. Now, I just want to point out that so far, most of Insomniac's attention has been on Marvel Spider-Man 2 and the Spider-Man games in general. The game will be coming out before Marvel's Wolverine, and to keep the franchise buzzing, Sony has been broadening their audience to the PC community with ports of Spider-Man 1 and the recently announced Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales. That surprising move has undoubtedly increased more hype around Insomniac Spider-Man, especially with all the custom mods these guys have been putting out. And now that Miles Morales is coming down the pipeline, that hype will continue even more. This is probably why we haven't seen any updates on Spider-Man 2, because Sony is taking their time to deliver a completely polished and improved follow-up to the first two entries. So to supplement the lack of updates, we've been getting these PC ports of the previous installments. Now with all that said, there have been murmurings going around that this game is nearing completion at least in terms of motion performance. Back in May, fans saw a cryptic tweet from Venom's voice actor Tony Todd which read, Early Riser, hashtag mocap time. This undoubtedly had us wondering what exactly he was alluding to. Based on Tony Todd's upcoming projects that are currently in production and pre-production, there's a decent chance that he's alluding to the infamous Lethal Protector. The fact that the actor likes several Venom-themed fan responses on his tweet likely speaks volumes too. So that was just one example that Insomniac was moving full speed ahead with the development. This is also the reason why we'll most likely be seeing more promotion for Marvel Spider-Man 2 and not that of Wolverine. That's obviously their golden goose. And it's also important to keep in mind that they've been very busy with all the content they produced in the last two years. Like, we gotta remember that they put out Miles Morales and Ratchet and Clank ripped apart in less than a few months of each other. 
One was cross-platform and the other one was next-gen only. But the next two titles they're producing, those being Spider-Man 2 and Wolverine, will both be next-gen exclusives. So Insomniac is going to need to be a little more tactical with each individual project. But as I mentioned earlier, it's rumored that the studio has completed the mocap performances. And it's obvious that they'll be brushing up on the animations and visuals. In terms of overall gameplay, we still don't have any new updates. The only thing that we do have is the supposed leaks that were posted on Reddit from an alleged insider who claims to be working on the game. But it's still good news that the studio has been moving non-stop to deliver yet another awesome Spider-Man project. But that also means that we won't be seeing anything else in terms of updates for Wolverine anytime soon. What I will say is that this is a clear indication that Insomniac will be starting on the development for it if they haven't already. In my last video, I pointed out that they sent out a tweet looking for seasoned game developers who specialize in things such as combat and traversal. And that was almost a year ago, which is crazy because it doesn't even feel like it's been that long. Like this in Marvel Spider-Man 2 feel like they were announced a couple months ago. But then again, I think that's a testament to how much stuff Insomniac has been putting out. There have been an insane amount of things they managed to stay busy with leading up to their next project. It also helps that they haven't really said much about Marvel's Wolverine. All we've gotten after the trailer was an article posted on the PlayStation blog website. We know that this project won't be directed by the same guy who directed Marvel Spider-Man 1 and the upcoming sequel. Instead, it will be helmed by Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales director, Brian Horton, which is going to be a big task compared to his last game. There was obviously a lot of groundwork already laid out with Spider-Man Miles Morales, so all there was to do was make Miles unique enough to stand out from Peter, which in my honest opinion, I think only took about 30% effort. Like, I'm not trying to take anything away from the devs of that game, but I gotta keep it a buck with you guys. There were only a few things that were added to make the game different from its predecessor. Not to mention it was a 5 hour expansion. But this time around Brian and his team has to start from the ground up and put 120% into this new project. They have to be the best because Wolverine is the best at what he does and what he does is cut stuff up in a brutal fashion. If you guys want to know what I think the gameplay mechanics and traversal should be like for Marvel's Wolverine, I made a video on it which I highly recommend you check out. It'll be available in my Marvel's Wolverine playlist at the very end of this video. I think the thing I never harped on was how they utilize his advanced healing factor without making it too overpowered. With that particular ability, he's pretty much immortal, so Insomniac will have to develop a unique approach to increase the difficulty level without taking away one of Logan's most recognizable abilities. I've read some gaming articles that suggest that the 3D gaming brawler Sifu's aging mechanic would make for a suitable way to approach his healing. In that particular title, players begin the game at the age of 20, and with each death they grow older. There have also been suggestions saying that the devs should come up with a story that has Logan somehow lose his healing factor and later get it back near the tail end of the game. But whatever Insomnia comes up with, I know it's gonna be brilliant, man. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys today. If I were to take a wild guess, we could see Wolverine in early 2024. And I say early 2024 because Insomniac has multiple studios which helps them get out a lot of projects in a timely fashion. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you guys. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think Insomniac should go with a similar approach to the Sifu video games when it comes to Wolverine's healing factor? Or do you think they should just axe the healing factor completely? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I asked you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. But if you really enjoyed it, I'd appreciate it if you shared it with all your friends and followers on different social media outlets. Sharing really makes a difference. But this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. As a successful YouTube user, I often get questions asking what I use to get my videos tons of views. And the answer to that is TubeBuddy. This thing has helped me take my channel to the next level in ways I never imagined. It's a browser extension that helps new and experienced YouTubers grow fast and optimize their channels. I've been using this extension for years and it's constantly getting updated with new features, like the SEO tool that helps me come up with the perfect title, description, and tags to get more people to click on my videos. It even provides you with analytics besides your videos to see how much traffic your video is generating from various social media sites. The extension is absolutely free, but as a special offer, we're giving a 50% discount for channels that have less than a thousand subscribers that purchase the Pro Upgrade. All you have to do is enter in the code RISINGSTARBUDDY. So if you're interested in starting a YouTube channel or taking your content to the next level, download the extension now. You can do so by clicking on this link that will be provided in the description of this video.